I can do good as well, you know, whatever tad bit that I can do. It is very necessary to have a very frank counselling. I think the work that we do, it's very real. You can see that it's sort of answering a very real need. Inner satisfaction, I would get only when I do something uh, which I can start and which I can continue. A lot of hurdles to cross if you want to sustain yourself in social space. Every minute is a challenge for us. I'm Paul Basil. I founded and run Wilgro. Wilgro is an incubator, an incubator of innovations and social enterprises that impact India's poor and specifically India's rural poor. You know, I was fairly convinced that uh, corporations in India weren't creating impact on the lives of the poor. I was also equally convinced that the entire NGO non-profit model was not creating the desired impact and a sustainable and a scalable impact. Uh, and therefore, I believe that if the problems of the poor remained, the answer to that was innovation. You had to do things differently. You had to do different things to create impact on the lives of the people which also meant that it was not about doing that on a philanthropic charity driven mode. How do you do that on an enterprise mode to make sure that that is sustainable and scalable. So both a combination of innovation and enterprise really excited me and that is really the core heart and philosophy of Wilgro as an organization. I think uh, when I was a young <laughs> professional uh, just graduating out of my management, uh, I uh, went on a trip uh, to assess a non-profit and the first time that I was offered, offered a bribe by a non-profit, I said something was wrong, right? A non-profit has to bribe somebody to actually get its done, work done of uh, planting trees in wastelands. I, saw, I thought there was something wrong. Uh, it was not that corruption that actually led me to doing what I am doing, but I realized that uh, uh, in general, the poor have no voice. Uh, when a non-profit offers a service to them because they're not literally buying it. The whole idea of uh, people using their wallet and buying a product or service is such a powerful model, uh, though at times it is not a perfect market-driven model, but the whole aspect that the poor has a choice not to buy a product or service that can make a difference to them, I think is important. So in my mind, that whole experience of getting uh, bribed <laughs> as a non-profit uh, 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 taught me that it is not about charity uh, that can actually make a difference. It is about the quality of service that you can offer to the poor to make them uh, successful and uh, make them prosper. So, Wilgro has around 10 to 12 full-timers and uh, another 5 to 7 uh, part-timers. But in addition to that, we have a Wilgro Fellowship Program where we actually recruit uh, mid-career professionals globally. And every year we have around 8 to 10 fellows that actually are part of us full time. So, uh, if you were to look at the total uh, team size would be around 20, 30 people at any point in time. I think so. Uh, they are all trained uh, either in um, biotechnology, engineering, agribusiness, energy, all those basic undergrad degrees. And then most of them have a management degree after that. Well, my, my view is that like minds meet and I think all the people have had a, a, a leaning towards social entrepreneurship and I think two pieces that I want to stress here, uh, every one of these people have wanted to create impact on the lives of the poor, that excites them. All of them also believe that entrepreneurship is the route to do that and I think that marrying of creating impact and yet doing that through an entrepreneurship route, I think is the common uh, philosophy that binds us all together. Most of the people are in the, um, in the 30s and early 30s, uh, but a uh, couple of us actually skews that a little bit <laughs> and uh, we do move to, uh, but, but average we are in the 30 to 35 range. 
but many of the fellows are in the sub 30 range also. So, I think we have had our uh, share of uh, good and bad with people uh, working. Uh, I think tenure and longevity has been a big concern. We have not had somebody who has travelled the journey with me last 12 years. Uh, part of the challenge has been our model has also evolved over time. The first 5 years of our work, we actually spent a lot of time working with grassroots innovators. That required a certain set of people and a certain set of people with certain kind of outlook. Uh, however, 2007-2008 onwards, we started working with early stage for profit enterprises who were not necessarily grassroots based entrepreneurs. That required another set of people. So, there was a team which was part of the journey in the first phase who possibly were not necessarily the right people to continue the journey with much more uh, aggressive, assertive for profit social entrepreneurs. So, I think what has worked uh, with hiring people is I think the first process of selection. The conventional way of reaching out, advertising, calling people really does not make sense. I think minds meet when they start talking about a common cause. I think uh, uh, when we work with very entrepreneurial people, it is important a uh, simple thing as designating a person as a co-founder on an initiative might actually sound silly. But if I was to designate a person as a co-founder of a fellowship program, a co-founder of an unconvention, uh, some of our initiatives as unconvention fellowships, and if I was to designate people as that, the mindset of the person changes. The person looks at it himself or herself as a as a co-founder, as an entrepreneur, and that brings with it a certain level of ownership, a certain level of commitment, and therefore a certain level of tenure which I think is important to build initiatives of this kind. So, that is another thing that has worked. Um, the, the piece um, that I think has started working is we have really revisited our basic compensation. We have been uh, following an approach which we call a need based compensation philosophy. Uh, we have moved away from that and we have moved to a, a social enterprise market philosophy which means that we would be competitive to the salaries paid by other social enterprise intermediaries in India. Uh, I think there is a personal journey that one needs to go through and to build that commitment that you want to be an entrepreneur and that takes time, right. Uh, so, I think spend a year, spend a year or two really trying to discover yourself and your ability to embrace uncertainty, your ability to, to live with a lot of chaos in building an organization. So, that is one piece and if you go through that, you will come out far more successful than just jumping into it and diving into it because you are moved by uh, wanting to make the world a better place to live in.